How's it going, guys? Matt here with Carolina Coops. Welcome to Video Chicken. Uh, to my left is my host, Kristen Warren. I think this one really could be a male. Oh, we got one that's hatching? This show is for you guys. This is the bass fiber. Y'all know chickens are the gateway drug into homesteading. We survived with only one trip to the ER. Coyotes are everywhere. It's about time you show up, Matt. Uh -huh. It's a great straw. It is time, finally, for chicken police. They defecate every 12 seconds. Is that true? <laughs> Now it is officially noon because the buzzer went off. <laughs> well, I've never counted. <laughs> Long more road coops. That's a good one with the, with the courts and everything. And more chickens. You're, well, the math you do now, Daddy, is chicken math. <laughs> Calm but, down, Matt. But... Calm down. <laughs> What is going on guys? Welcome to Video Chicken Live. My name is Matt and Kristen will be in here, our co-host. I think she's busy doing something, so I hope it's well worth it. I promise she will be here. Uh, it is July 8th already. I don't know where June went. Oh, yeah, here gone. she comes. What? Wait, whoa, no, 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 no. I was under the impression of something completely different. Is this, does this count as surprise. late or no? Look, I was cooking. As long as she has something for me, it doesn't count as late. Yeah, yeah, look, 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 look. Three glasses and three plates. Okay. Yeah, but with well, some she's... kind of weird concoction of, don't, don't watch. When, when, are, when is Lisa on? Uh, well, if you were here for pre-show. <laughs> I was cooking. Um. <laughs> anyways. Okay, as I was saying, July 8th, 2022, we are live. It is noon Eastern. It is Friday already. I cannot believe how fast these weeks go by. Um, guys, today we have an awesome, awesome show. I know I say that every week, but today is extra special. It is special. Today we have a guest on that I am so thankful that she has taken the time out of her very busy schedule to join us. And you're a mess. You're a wrecking ball. You guys miss it the one time she's walking in the studio and all the lights start falling. Uh, anyways. Okay. Are you good? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> uh, we got a special guest today. Do you have your headset, um, Christian? She, she's going to get Well, it I'm going to have to jump up and get the, oh, okay. the, get the, the main entree. Okay. But, well, we have assistants out there. Okay. Did you not? You know the one of the greatest things you taught me? Delegate. Delegate. And I won't say taught me. You just some You're reason. You're still learning. Still learning. Yes. <laughs> delegation, delegation, delegation. All right. So anyway, so we have a special guest today that I am so thankful in her busy schedule. She's going to join us. Mm -hmm. And she is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to backyard chicken keeping. Also. I love bringing on guests because you're not just going to keep hearing from us. And the thing about chickens is everyone's got an opinion and there, God knows there's times I agree and I disagree. And over the years, I've been following this lovely lady. And I have to say one of the things I love about her is her, we align a lot in our, what we preach, what our passion is and what we want to share with people um, that are into the backyard chicken movement, or more importantly, thinking about getting into backyard chickens. Mm -hmm. Because I want people to realize it is not hard. But there are certain things you need to know, and you understand these things, and it's actually probably the best hobby ever, right? That's right. Awesome. I do a lot of stuff that I got from Lisa. Like the fermented scratch grains, the way I do my eggshells to feed back to them, I got that all from her. Yes, so Lisa, Lisa mm -hmm. Steele from Fresh Eggs Daily. Um, if you're in the backyard chickens, I you must have heard of her. If you haven't, you definitely got to go check her out. We're going to talk about all the places that she is at. Um, and also, she has her own show now. And I believe mm -hmm. um, in a couple seconds, we're going to have Lisa Steele come in. She's in the green room. Uh, gorgeous setting. I'm kind of jealous of where she is. And she's up in Maine. Yes. Um, and having a beautiful day up there. And she's going to come on here in a little bit. But I think, Ingrid, you said that you had a 30-second um, trailer trailer of her show. Of mm -hmm. her show. What is her show called? Welcome to My Farm. Welcome to My Farm. I, I didn't want to screw it up. Welcome to My Farm. And where can we see Welcome to My Farm? It's on, well, I'm sure Lisa can tell you, but it's a PBS show. And I think it got picked up by Creative TV, Create TV. So it's, that is it's awesome. streaming on a lot of services, and I think it's all over the country. That's how awesome this lady is. Yeah. And not to mention, too, and I'm very jealous about this. I think 
she has like six or eight books out now. <laughs> I just want to get one, and I don't even like reading. I want to have one book published, uh, just because I think that is just such an awesome uh, goal in life, a milestone to uh, see your work in in uh, paperback, hardcover, whatever it's called. Yeah. So yes, we're going to, about five minutes, we're going to bring Lisa Steele in. Mm-hmm. And I hope if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments um, for her. And I have a feeling we're going to have a wonderful conversation. We're going to hear a lot of the similarities that you hear from us. Um, and also, I'm hoping we find some things that you know we'll be able to create a great discussion about. Um, there is one thing, and this is one of my favorite books of hers, the 101 Chicken Keeping Hacks. And there are oh some God, hacks in you. here. <laughs> Oh, what, and I am so hungry. All right, so we're going to, you're going to see what's going on here. Can um, our first book be a Carolina Coop's Mad Libs? I don't even know what Mad Libs is. That is yes. non everyone. And I forgot to also mention, you've already heard Ingrid, as always, uh, behind the computer, behind the soundboard over there, make sure everything sounds and looks good. Uh, so again, if you have any questions for Lisa Steele from Fresh Eggs Daily at 1210, we're going to bring her on. Yeah, I have it, some Instagram questions for her as well. So awesome. thank everybody for submitting your questions and you can submit them here. Too. Absolutely. If you don't have any questions, which are crazy if you don't, because this is such a great opportunity to ask your questions, um, let us know where you're watching from. Give us a wave, share the show, help us continue to boost this great show. Uh, you guys have done a great job doing that. We want to continue <laughs> growing it. Also, we're going to have a giveaway. We are. We're going to give away one of Lisa's. Boy, we we got to draw it out. Dramatic. Oh. We're going to have a giveaway. What we're going to have a giveaway. God knows what it'll be. Look what, <laughs> look what Kristen did. Kristen right. baked... Go ahead, Kristen. Tell them what you did. It's the puff egg puff puffy eggs. Are you kidding me? No, I. Okay, Lisa. Lisa, help us. As you can tell, we are coming to you live. So we're going to talk about all this. Uh, Kristen had a wonderful idea of um, the book that Kristen has and that likes a lot is the Lisa Steele, the Fresh Eggs Daily cookbook um this reminds me of a fun fact Uh, i don't know how many people know this i believe it's true that all the pleats in a chef's hat is all the ways to cook an egg and i always think about when cooking eggs i always think about that what in the world are you pouring why do you guys got to do this to me ingrid do you have any idea what the hell she's doing over there no i do not i'm Uh, eating my puffy egg well we well already all right let's go ahead Uh, let's (laughs) let's uh play that promo has begun what there's no partying um, yet. Hopefully, we're going to be partying. Not, why is there an oak <laughs> a maple Japanese leaf in there? maple. Um, that concerns me greatly. I'm, I'm often I worried be. that I'm going to be seeing Superman flying through the sky after you guys feed me something. Right? Yeah. Nothing I need to worry about. I got a big afternoon. We all do. Yeah. Oh, oh it's sanitized. We have inspection day Just today like the, here at Carolina Coops. So we got a lot going on. All right. Let's go ahead. I want to see this promo. Okay. Hang on. How do I get this on here? I oh, look share. at that. Look at that. Oh, you gave me one too? I, I don't, I can do without the maple leaf. Thank you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the garnish. Okay. Yeah. I'll get it. Thank you. Let go. I'm letting go. Thank you. Um, okay. So here is Welcome to My Farm Trailer, Lisa Steele from Fresh Eggs Daily. I'm Lisa Steele, author, blogger, and fifth generation chicken keeper. I live in rural Maine with my husband, flock of chickens, ducks, and geese, Winston the corgi, and Linus the indoor outdoor barn cat. We moved to Maine for the peace and serenity. We wanted a simpler life and to step back in time where there are still corner stores and your neighbors still know your name. Welcome to my farm. Well, I hope we didn't blow everyone's speakers out with that. <laughs> um, that is Welcome to My Farm by Lisa Steele, Fresh Eggs Daily. I got it. I got oh. it. Um, <laughs> what is going on, Lisa? I We got to pause that. And Should I leave? No. What did you, what did you, what happened here? Um, you have to put the um, back, background back. Oh, my gosh. We normally know what we're doing. What did you do? Oh, I see what's going on. I love on. how you say, what did I do when you took over the miles? This is a typical, this is Matt 101. Blame the other person. Oh, look, at she's got a chicken. All right, yes. here is Lisa oh, Steele for Fresh Eggs Daily. Good morning. Lisa. Well, actually, good afternoon, Lisa. How are you doing today? Oh, I muted her. I'm sorry. She's Hang slippery, on. and she doesn't like standing on them. So she's usually better behaved, but. Yeah, I uh, am too. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, so this is I Lisa. I figured I'd see how long she wanted to stay. 
So this is Lisa Steele from Fresh Eggs Daily. Thank you again so much for joining us. Um, we are live, and Lisa, it looks like you're on one of your front porch, back porch up in Maine. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's a gorgeous day. We struggle through winters, so we can enjoy summers like this. <laughs> it's a payoff. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize, especially I see it all the time in the South. You guys have no idea. You might get two months of good weather, and within that two-month window, maybe I'll be generous, say three months, you get 50% of it. Maybe the sun is even out, especially where I'm from. Uh, so when that's when you get a day like today, uh, especially up there, you are out there enjoying every second of it. So, Lisa, thank you so much for being here. Um, we have some questions for you. And again, like I was saying earlier, about 12.15 is when we, it, the show really starts to peak, and I see people coming in, and Ingrid's going to do her job about making sure that um, – I just got egg yolk on my phone. So, yeah, I wanted to start off right away. So here is, you know, Lisa, how many books have you written so far and have published? Uh, seven. Seven. Wow. Okay, so I got it. We only it. have two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's hmm. it's a little crazy, but yeah, my cookbook was my seventh. Wow. Oh, oh, yeah. So this is your latest one. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, so that's what Kristen was doing today is we were looking through it and we were. Uh, well, I've been looking through it all week. Right, and we were thinking about actually cooking on the show, but of course we're not going to have time for that as usual. I, I did it right before the show. But this is impressive. Um, so, uh, Lisa, where? So this is puffy eggs. Is that what it's called? I think puffy eggs. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I don't have it open to that page, but there's probably some debris on that page. Right. So, so I would love to right know. To you know, how long have you been in? Uh, how long have you had chickens? Oh, as an adult, we got them in 2009, but I had chickens as a kid. I was in 4-H, you know, oh. did that whole thing. Gotcha. And then what was your, how do you find your inspiration for, I mean, this is just, there's so many recipes in here and I'm curious, you know, how do you find your inspiration for the recipes? Do you share other people's recipes? Are these all your recipes? And do you have a favorite one that you love the most? So many questions. Um, yeah, so most of the recipes are either family favorites, things I remember my mom making, things that are on regular rotation here because we eat eggs all the time. So it really wasn't too difficult. I had to cut down. You know, I bought 100 recipes. I'm never going to be able to come up with that many. But I actually had to cut out a lot just because, I mean, you guys are chickens. You know, you eat eggs like every day, every meal, you know. So it is um, lots of favorites. And then some things that I just thought needed to be in an egg cookbook, you know, lemon curd and mayonnaise and pound cake and creme brulee and, you know, the things that really highlight eggs. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of a combination of, of all of that family favorites, things I love to make and classics. And um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I have a favorite. I love eggs, but I really eggs Benedict, which ended mm. up on the cover. Mm. I'd what? say if I could only eat eggs one way the rest of my life, it would be with hollandaise sauce drizzled all over them. That is actually my favorite is Eggs Benedict. When I'm out traveling, it's one of the things that's my go-to, uh, especially be able to try it in all different ways. Uh, so I expect next week uh, Eggs Benedict out of the uh, cookbook. <laughs> um, I have to say, though, this puffy eggs, um, where did this come from? Where did this idea come from? Uh, puff pastry in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> wondering what I could do with it because it had been there probably a little too long and had some freezer burn on it. Um, I've made a couple different tart type things, you know, it's squares and circles and all that with, with the puff pastry. And it's just kind of fun. You know, it's something really easy. I also like the toasty baked egg cups where it's basically just a piece of bread in a muffin tin mm -hmm. and you drop an egg in and bake it. That's also super fun, super easy, great way to use up extra bread. You know, I, I didn't want to, my pet peeve with cookbooks is a recipe that's great, but it requires you to buy 15 things that you will never use again, ever. Yeah. You know, so I wanted the recipes to be things that just used things you have around, use the same ingredients over and over again in different ways. I just think that's more practical. Well, that, that makes perfect sense. Now I have to, I'm going to be honest mm -hmm. as I always am. This is good. It's really I know. good. It's, this it, is so good. Not Matt only is a meat and potatoes type of guy. So it, I did try to pick out something that would be different that would expand your horizons just a little bit. 
and but still I, be good. And I have a horrible habit of eating so fast. It's actually caused me health issues. There, normally, this would be gone, but I don't want to be chewing inside the microphone or in front right. of the microphone. This is so good. And not only is it good, I love, like she was talking about the texture with the pastry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, good. I don't I don't know anything about this. I have no idea what it is. But this is so good. And, of course, these are going to be your fresh backyard eggs. Yeah. Which are going to make a huge difference. Yeah. Um, wow. And then we are drinking. Can you guess what we're drinking? Do, with the maple yeah, leaf? it's the maple sour. <laughs> Maple that's sour. Maple sour. What is maple we, sour? Try, try it. What it's happens good. in your old age? You start spitting food when you talk. Um, maple <laughs> sour. So explain so to so me this. Whiskey sour. Whiskey sour mm. with maple syrup because I live in Maine instead of like a, a simple syrup or a sugar. Is this? And um, does this have whiskey in it? it? Mm -mm. Drink up, Ingrid. Bourbon. Bourbon. Oh, Bourbon. Geez. But I brought my finest bourbon. You know, we have a, a, a major inspection later today. I am such a lightweight. I can't. Oh I know. And I, I beg for one you. sip. So this is, this is a <laughs> recipe. It's delicious, awesome. though. This is a recipe from Lisa Steele's. It is. Fresh Eggs Daily Cookbook. And she, she suggested the maple leaf garnish, too. Oh, okay. I don't know about inside the drink. That was my touch. <laughs> Yeah, okay. usually like as a coaster. I use the drink <laughs> as a coaster <laughs> under the drink. Yeah, there's there's a little so, bit, of, you know. Lisa, I, but the, oh, I, I even I forgot Mar Miranda was here. I think I'm gonna let her go. She's yep. just like sitting patiently, saying, "Can I go now?" So, Lisa, when did you really start Fresh Eggs Daily? When did that I whole sure empire of backyard chicken keeping? Because I feel like you were on the ground floor of something big before people, before this really exploded. And why did, really why did you lucky. start it? So we got our chickens in 2009. Um, we were living in Virginia. My husband was in the Navy and I was sort of bored at home. And backyard chickens were kind of sort of becoming a thing as were blogs and Facebook. Mm -hmm. And it sort of was like the perfect storm. So we got the chickens and I started sharing on Facebook. And, you know, then I started the blog really kind of just as an archive. You know, so when people ask me questions on Facebook, I can refer them back to the blog and I figured, you know, I'll write 20 articles, you know, right. about broody hens and egg bound hens and, you know, what to do with this, whatever. And that would be the end of it. And so now what, 12 years and 600 articles later, you know, I'm still writing, but I, it wasn't, I didn't have a plan. I didn't, I just kind of picked the name Fresh Eggs Daily out of a hat. I, you know, set up the Facebook page because Facebook was cool then. Everybody was doing it. <laughs> and um, it just kind of took on a life of its own. It was very much being in the right place at the right time with the right message because there there were books on chickens obviously right there were you no know, other facebook groups there are other authors and, and blogs and things but what they were doing and talking about really wasn't speaking to me because i wasn't interested in using chemicals or antibiotics or any of that with my chickens right you know i was interested in, in doing it really naturally really economically you know, in a way that made sense to me. And really, there wasn't that much information out there. So I just started researching and talking to people and just writing it myself, which, so that was 2009, 10, whatever. And then my first book came out in 2013, which basically was my blog in book form, you know, because right. the publisher said we would like to, you know, publish a book with all this information in it. So... So speaking of that, I just want to remind people because I know there's more people joining in. We are live. It is July 8th, 2022. We have Lisa Steele from Fresh Eggs Daily. If you guys have any questions, you have the best of the best right now, right at your fingertips. If you have any questions for Lisa. And that was a thing over the years that I appreciate with Lisa. And as someone, um, I appreciate Lisa going out there in front of everyone, in front of the world. And she's going to understand what I'm saying. When you start to voice your opinion, especially when you're passionate about it, you're probably going to make 90% of the people happy, but there's going to be that small percentage that like beats you up. And I noticed even Lisa, they beat her up. And the thing I, I, I loved learning over the years about Lisa is we've learned a lot ourselves. And it just, there's so many things that we have in common uh, where Lisa, even in her book, um, which I want to talk about. This is my favorite book. So who doesn't love hacks? Now, I promise we didn't cut this part out. That's just a green screen. Yeah. Um, 101, 101 Chicken Keeping Hacks. And there are so many great hacks in here that I want to talk about in a little bit. But most importantly, she talks about the deep layer system. Mm -hmm. And that is something we are very, very passionate about. And I wanted, Lisa, if you wouldn't mind, kind of share when someone comes to you and says, Lisa, what is this deep layer system? Can you you know, put your, what, what do you say to people when they ask you about that? 
that is a good one and it's actually a good example of something that is very polarizing you know there's a couple different chicken keeping topics that as soon as you mention them all the haters are going to start jumping in um so you have to develop a little bit of thick skin but yeah the deep layer method is something that i stumbled across you know reading a, an old book or somewhere where instead of cleaning your coop out every week or every day like some people do which i don't even understand um in the fall, you start sort of creating a deep layer of your litter, whether it's shavings or straw or dried leaves or pine needles or whatever it may be. And you turn that inside the coop, you add more litter as needed as it gets packed down. And what happens is you're basically composting inside your chicken coop. So all winter, you are letting that all break down, all the feathers, all the chicken manure. And if you do it correctly, you know, if, if you compost in your garden, you know, compost piles shouldn't smell. You know, they're not stinky. They're not dirty. They're not wet. They're not messy. And you save yourself a ton of effort, <laughs> time, money. And in the spring, you've got this beautiful layer of literally dirt on the bottom underneath your litter because you're turning it, you know, so all the small particles fall to the bottom as they decompose. And you've got beautiful soil for your garden in the spring so it's it's really brilliant and people who haven't tried it are so quick to just jump on it and say that's disgusting i can't imagine not cleaning my coop all winter and uh, it's pretty amazing actually <laughs> have you ever seen I, i've read and i have to believe this is true um that it's even the deep litter system is also healthier for the chickens have you yeah. read or done any research regarding mm -hmm. that Yes. Over the years, I, I mean, I've been fortunate because of what I do and because of the notoriety, I guess, that I've, I've had access to poultry scientists and, you know, um, departments at universities and avian vets and all these different people to talk to. And yeah, the deep litter, when you're composting, it creates beneficial microbes, which actually are, you know, healthy for the chickens. So it, it really does have a lot of benefits other than just being easy and, you know, cause I always say it's, I don't do what's necessarily easier for me. It's always about the chickens, like what's going to be best for them. Sometimes it does end up being easier for me. Sometimes it doesn't, but it always should be number one, what's going to be best for them. And the deep litter method, I absolutely swear by. So you, you've heard it there. It's not just us. I tell you people, I love when our <laughs> customers call us up, you know, a year or two years later and they're like, wow, it is incredible. We've done live videos. We did one recently where we cleaned out one of our coops and that gentleman, you know, never seen a chicken coop before this and that. And you somehow talked him in the mm -hmm. doing a sniff test. It is true. It yeah, is true. The deep yeah, litter system years. is amazing. Now we are huge advocates when it comes to the deep litter system using a product we call industrial hemp. And I'm just curious, have you ever had a chance to use industrial hemp uh, for your bedding or do you have a, a favorite that you like to use for your deep litter system? Uh, well, I did just start using hemp. So we do live in Maine. It's cold. <laughs> we also have ducks, which sort of changes it up a little bit because they do sleep on the floor. You know, when you have the chickens, they're they're roosting. So the litter really is just something to provide cushioning, you know, so they're not coming down on a hard floor. But when you have ducks, they sleep on the floor. So I do use straw in the winter because it's it's really warm for them. They love it doesn't decompose quite as quickly. But I started using hemp two summers ago, I think in the summer. I love the hemp. I mean, I never clean my coop. It, it never smells. It's amazing. It's like magic litter. Um, I, I didn't like shavings. They're super dusty. I, I ditched them a long time ago. I just couldn't deal with the dust. Um, and the chicken's respiratory problems, you know, from breathing in all the dust. But yeah, the hemp is wonderful. I do like hemp a lot for the summer. So again, just for the record, we are not paying Lisa Steele <laughs> yeah. uh, to say any of these things. I just want you guys to hear from someone else because we are chicken people. And, you know, it's funny. I find that a lot of times us as human beings, we overcomplicate things. And what I always mm -hmm. try to tell we people do. when it comes mm -hmm. to having chickens, as long as you got the right setup and you understand, you know, what the instincts are of chickens and having the right coop, which is why we got into this business in the first place. I'll have an accident, but there's just no good coops out there. Um, when it comes to the deep litter system and using the hemp, it is awesome when it not only helps you out with your time and it's also healthier for the chickens. Mm -hmm. And I am so thankful that industrial hemp and hemp in general is coming back around, becoming popular mm -hmm. for many reasons. Um, Ingrid. It's so, pricey, but it, in the long run, I think you end up saving money. Well, that's exactly it. You know, and there are a lot of people that are realizing that. And our sticker shock at first, I have to tell people. In the long run, even though you're going to pay a little bit more up front, you save money in the long run. Yeah, you're using one mm -hmm. bale or two bales for two years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, 
Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not you're not getting all that dust. I mean, I, I hear from so many people with chickens with respiratory problems, and I have to believe a lot of it is from using the shavings because if you brood chicks in your house you'll realize yes. how dusty those shavings are. Like you end up with dust all over your house just from baby chicks. Mm-hmm. So, um, so Ingrid, I wanted to get to, we have some fans out there that have yeah. some questions for Lisa. We have a couple of Lisa, questions. Lisa, are you ready for some questions? I'm ready. Awesome. Okay. So is there a prize for the right answers? <laughs> we know we you just have want... all the right. answers. Yeah, we, <laughs> <laughs> you are the prize. So. Um, so still Meadow Farm Girl asked on Instagram, do you have any unique ideas for keeping chickens cool during the summer heat? Yeah, I mean, obviously, that's a very timely question. You know, it's funny because we did live in Virginia for the first seven years. And I mean, I had a fan in my coop. I did what I call, which is probably completely politically incorrect, but redneck air conditioning where you freeze a gallon milk jug, mm-hmm. hang it in the window. So then when the breeze blows in, it, I mean, it really does cool the air down and it, it'll stay frozen almost all night if you use, you know, a big gallon milk jug. Um, we did that. I gave them electrolytes, obviously shade. The ducks had a, a kiddie pool. So Maine has been a lot easier because it doesn't get super hot. So that's really nice. They still get shade and cool water, electrolytes. I like to freeze electrolytes in ice cube trays and then pop them out and just put those into the water. Like, especially if you go to work, it's a good way to keep the water cooler, make sure they're getting their electrolytes. Um, A lot of people feel like it's maybe spoiling chickens or being ridiculous, but chickens will die of heat exhaustion. It's Mm -hmm. super important to think about them and make sure that they're cool. And their idea of cool is way different than ours. Like their sweet spot is between like 45 and 65 degrees. Mm. So it's way cooler than you think. Like when even here, if it gets to be like 80 degrees, the chickens start panting and holding their wings out. (laughs) I'm like, guys, come on. It's not that warm, but (sighs) thank thank you so much for saying that. Cause we have people all the time, especially, you know, uh, they get so obsessed over keeping the chickens warm in the winter. Yeah. And I try to t- explain yeah. to people, it's the summer heat we need to really focus on. Um, so I just want to remind everyone, 101 chicken keeping hacks. And inside here, you have uh, several hacks on to, to that thing. Exactly. Uh, how keep your hens cool. Uh, so again, if you guys have any uh, are looking for hacks, whatever, yeah, you know, there's going to be book. more some things we're going to talk about. This is a great book because I tell you, I don't know how you get the pictures you get. I don't know if you take them yourself. Um, I don't know how any of this works, but I tell you, I do not like reading. I have enjoyed going through here. Mm-hmm. There are so many great hacks I did want to get to, and I don't know if we are going to run out of time with Lisa, how much time she has. I definitely want to get some, some more questions, but yep. I want to remind people all those things in there about keeping your hands cool are in here. And also another thing I want to bring up because this is polarizing. This is touchy, and I, I I thank Lisa for saying the same thing that we preach. So let's flip it. Winter time. Do you have to put a heat source inside your house? Please, please talk to the people. For the have. record. Yes. And again, we lived in Virginia. We now live in Maine. So I have experience with both climates, and it is so much easier to keep chickens in cold climates. We don't heat our coop. I don't light my coop. Chickens don't need heat. You know, it's funny because when we lived in Virginia, just from the reading I had done in the research and talking to people, chickens don't need heat. We didn't heat our coop. That's easy to say when you live in Virginia, (laughs) you know? And then all of a sudden we were moving to Maine, and I was thinking, it gets to be like negative. It's gotten down to like negative 18 here in the winter. And I'm thinking to myself, I've been telling people for seven years not to heat their coops. There's no way I can heat my chicken coop. And I felt so bad for my chickens those first few cold nights. And I was afraid that I was going to go out and they were going to be frozen to death. And I would go out, open the coop door. They ran right out like it was nothing. Mm-hmm. Chickens do not need heat. <laughs> they also, I mean, it's, they also... it's bad for them. They also it's, it's give actually off, bad for them. They give off hmm? heat. They give off heat in the hen house too. So as they are they in the hen a, house, they kind of as warm long each as other. Yes, as long as they're, you know, adult, healthy, normal chickens. Like if you have babies, you're young ones, obviously. But um yeah, they give up my coop is on average twenty degrees warmer than the outside temperature just from the chicken's body heat. Um and if you live in a cold climate, put your coop in full sun pick cold, hardy breeds, you know, like be smart about it. I, I get so upset when people just 
they don't understand that chickens don't need the heat and it's so dangerous. It's, it's not healthy for them. You don't want them sitting in their coop all winter. Like you don't want to encourage them to stay inside. You want them outside. I wrap some tarps around my run, clear tarps. I make it like a greenhouse. They're outside in the sun, out of the wind. They're perfectly happy. Um, you know, I'd say there's probably less than 1% of the people who raise chickens should actually heat their coop. And that's people who live like in Siberia where it doesn't go above negative 40 all winter long. Then yes, you might want to heat your coop, but then again, you might not even want to be raising chickens. Like, exactly. you know, that, that, yeah, or maybe you don't want to be there either. That's an interesting <laughs> point. Yeah, exactly. And, and when it comes like, to Like rethink your life choices or something like that. What did you do to the Russian people. government? <laughs> right? There are oh, people in, in Scandinavia, in Alaska, anytime, you know, all every winter, same thing don't eat your chicken coop here's why blah 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 i posted on facebook and everyone comes rushing in saying i have to heat my coop it gets down mm. below freezing yeah and i'm like well we... it gets below zero here and we don't you know and then people start chiming in from scandinavia and alaska and wyoming saying we don't heat our coops like the people who tend to heat their coops are the people who absolutely should never need the heat because they live in the south and and they don't like the cold so they figure the chickens don't like the cold thank you i yes. that i say that all the time my southern customers are obsessed with heating the coop and i'm always like we're just a little sensitive. i don't want to be insulting you guys don't know what cold is and i also <laughs> want to be clear about something i know that i want to get to a lot more topics but i want to hit some key points there is a difference between temperature and draft Mm -hmm. And that's another mm -hmm. thing we emphasize with our coop. Yeah, that is so good, by the way. So scary good. Scary good. Um, <laughs> um, that's why in all our coops, you can close off the drafts. If you think about it, wind chill is what kills us. It's not always Absolutely. the temperature. Um, and and dampness. As long as your chickens are dry, they can fluff their feathers. I mean, sometimes in the winter, I'll be, you know, getting their them ready for bed and I'm outside doing this, doing that. As soon as I walk into the coop. I'm like, it is nice in here. It's warm. I think I could spend the night in here because there's such a difference between the outside windy, biting cold coop full of straw. This is kind of nice. I have curtains on my coop windows. I get a lot of flack for that as well. But in the winter, closing them helps keep the body heat in. And the summer, you know, you can shut them in the, in the heat of the day and try to keep the sun out. So pretty much mm. everything I do is practical. Like it might be pretty and it might be nice, but there's a, an underlying reason that I do it. And that again, makes sense. All these things I have seen in this one book, and she has a total of seven books, 101 Chicken Keeping Hacks. Um, I do want to get to a question. I know you have questions over there, there's Ingrid. so but, many questions. Oh, awesome. Well, let, let's get through them, but I want to make sure Beth Farrell, um, this is a great question because th this is the most common questions, which yeah. Lisa, I'm sure you're like, yes, everyone has predators. Yes. I mean, it's the same thing over and over, but you know what? That is kind of our job. I want to make sure people understand don't overcomplicate it. You can have chickens. Um, Beth asks, how does Lisa help protect her flock from hawks? And again, go into this book right here. I think this is awesome. Now, I have never done this that myself. That was such a fun book to write. Yeah, that was that book came out, what, almost 10 years after my first book. And it kind of was like 10 years of everything I had learned and just you know, it was like spew it out on the pages. Here's everything you need to know. Um, yeah, I mean, I uh, we had a really bad fox attack early, early, early on, like our first year raising chickens. And I swore I was not going to raise chickens anymore. And it was horrible. And I was never going to let them out again. You know, and over the years, I've, I've relented. But yeah, predator proofing is, it's like the most important thing. There's predators everywhere. It's not a good excuse not to have chickens. If you feel more comfortable keeping them in a run, like I know your coops come with huge, gorgeous runs. If that's your comfort level, that's fine. Chickens can be perfectly fine in a, in a large run. You know, you can give them kitchen scraps and garden scraps and give them dried leaves and a mirror and swings. And I don't believe that they have to free range to be happy. Uh, I don't believe that. But if you're comfortable with it, they're going to love it. And it's yeah. going to be good. They'll eat ticks. They'll eat bugs. Um, oh, yeah. I'm, I am a huge fan. I tell people, you know, it's nice to have a run on on your coop. However, there is nothing is better than free ranging. I don't care how big your run yeah, is. We are fans of free ranging. Yeah, but we, it is a risk analysis. It's, that's a it's personal eventually, decision. Yeah. Eventually, it's never going to end well. I mean, if you free range long enough, you will lose a chicken, all your chickens, you know, whatever. Um I am, I try to be really cautious. I mean, I'm, I'm home all day now because, you know, I work from home. My husband's retired. We have a dog, we have a cat, we have geese. Um, so I try to mitigate the risks. And there's also a lot in the book or even on my blog, I do have an article on keeping the chickens safe from hawks. And it's a lot about timing, time of year, time of day. You know, when predators are feeding their babies in the spring, 
they're going to be super bold. They're going to, you know, take desperate measures they might not normally. And then going into winter, they're going to be hungry. They're going to try to stock up. So there's certain times a year when it's safer. Also certain times a day, usually late afternoon, the hawks have eaten what they're going to eat for the day. And we mm. rarely see hawks later in the day. You know, dusk and dawn are bad times for fox and coyotes. Put up trail cams, get a good idea of what's lurking what's roaming around and then do some research into their hunting habits what they eat when they eat you know all that kind of stuff can really help yeah just like when we talk about pests and mites and mice and rats it's mm -hmm. understand the pest mm -hmm. research the pest mm -hmm. learn all those things um that is great great advice uh before i forget i wanted to mention um if i understand there was a giveaway yes um from lisa yes all right ingrid can you uh tell us what that giveaway is going to be well, it's going to be one of Lisa's books, and she's going to sign it, right, Lisa? <laughs> mm -hmm. and yes, I am. I mean, if, if you can let somebody choose, or we can pick one. It doesn't matter. Well, we have something very interesting. So it is already 1235, and I wanted to make sure we give everyone a chance <laughs> to be able to win a book from Lisa Steele, signed autograph, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, Why don't you show people what? <laughs> Ingrid saying, come on, come on. Come on. I know. I just that my whole job. You know, this is very therapeutic moving. to me. Yeah, that is true. That's what we love about Ingrid. Here is how <laughs> you are going to be able to win a book from Lisa Steele. Dun, 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 dun. Somebody got nipples in, and we got a lot of nipples in, so they are back in stock. So I thought, in honor of having nipples back, and here's where all the porn links come in. Um, uh -huh. How many nipples are in this wonderful vase? You get one guess. And whoever gets it right first wins the book from Lisa Steele. I am the only one that knows this number. And it must be exact. And it has to be the first person. Wait. Yes. Oh, did I say someone was supposed to? Uh, no, I mean, someone's I Someone's going to win whether All right. So if no not. one gets exact, if whoever's closest, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, um, it has on. to be the first person. We're like, what's the tiebreaker going to be? Um, so. If you are watching right now, thank you for being here. We are live with Lisa Steele from Fresh Eggs Daily. Um, she is being so generous. Gonna is going to give you a free signed autograph book. The winner must guess how many nipples are in this vase right here. So just put your guesses in the comments. Yes, put your guesses in the comments. You get one guess, no cheating, and the first person cheating. to get it right. How can we cheat? No I don't cheat. know. I don't. <laughs> it seems like how can we get inside your head? I know. It seems like every time we do this, someone's like, oh, "I won." Do that, you know, whatever. But I did learn the last time we did this. I don't think we had any arguments, just because I brought in my at the time eight year old daughter. I was like, no one's going to argue with an eight year old daughter. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so, Lisa, thank you so much for doing that. Just wanted to get that in here. All right, so let's get to some more questions. So, somebody asked um, our creek side layer. I, I'm sorry, my phone is small and I can't read. Um, will chickens eat or ignore poisonous plants like foxglove and buttercup? Mm. They just want to know. Great question. They know. I do have lists of toxic. I mean, there's the, the list of toxic plants is so long. You know, I wouldn't go around your yard and start ripping things out. I don't go out of my way to plant things that I know are toxic if I'm adding landscaping. But generally they know. Um, I have read that there's nothing in nature that actually tastes good that's toxic. So like there's no there's no sneaky plants. So like when the <laughs> when the chicken eats it, it doesn't taste good. They know they're not supposed to eat it. Um, so I don't really worry about it. I think the only way that they would eat something toxic is if they were locked up and that's all you gave them to eat and they were forced right. to eat it. But we do have foxglove, we have lupin, um, we have azalea, a lot of things that they shouldn't be eating and they haven't yeah. touched them and you can also plant so they pretty that, much know. yeah and you can plant things that they do like like my chickens like exactly grapes. i mean the list of things that they do like is <laughs> is very long so yeah, yeah. somebody else well, asked, the question i love is what can i plant that my chickens won't eat that's not toxic you know and basically there is nothing because no. <laughs> it's toxic and they won't eat it or they'll eat it so or there's no dig it up. brown or they'll dig it up mm -hmm. either way so Magnolia Hills Interior, which is Shelly, uh, one of our customers, asked, why don't you keep roosters? I actually, we do have a rooster now. Oh, um, do? We've had him for about four years. Yeah, I didn't for a long time. Um, I mean, honestly, not a huge fan. I, I don't need to be woken up. We have alarm clocks for that. You know, <laughs> I can set the alarm on my phone. So I don't need a rooster to crow to wake me up. Um, if I want to add baby chicks, I can buy 
day old chicks. I can buy hatching eggs. And I don't, I mean, I just didn't like how the rooster tore the hens up. You know, we had some roosters that were just relentless. And my chickens were always like barebacked and broken feathers and constantly running away. But we ended up getting a bantam cochin that was supposed to be a, a hen and it was a rooster, Sherman, like four years ago. And he's so small he sort of flew under the radar. We forgot that he was a rooster and <laughs> he's still here. So we do actually have a rooster. I think he's too small. I don't think any of our eggs are actually fertilized. fertilized. Um, yeah, I've never noticed that bullseye when I've cracked an egg in the pan. And he kind of, he'll moderate fights between the hens. He'll mm-hmm. stand out, you know, and look for predators and things. But even a full-size rooster is not going to be a match you know, against a coyote or a dog or an eagle or a fisher cat or whatever. So I, I don't really find a lot of use for roosters and I'll probably get like a ton of hate mail and that's fine. Um, but little Charmy has been great. So I think a <laughs> bantam rooster for us really works because yeah. now we do have the rooster that crows. So when people come, they're like, oh, that's so cute. You have a rooster, you know, but Spe- he doesn't do any damage. <laughs> Speaking of people coming, um, one of our super fans, Francine, asks, uh, for people that live close enough, do you ever do tours of your farm? No. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. No, we do not. No, that's what the TV show is for. That's what social media is for. That's what this is for. You can pretend you're visiting me, but no. I mean, just imagine we we are very careful to keep where we live private for super fan and also hater reasons. Like yeah, right. either extreme is not somebody that I'd really want to ever come face to face with. Yeah. We have another question, which I think is interesting. Um, have you um, have you ever had a Merrix break out in your flock? And if so, how did you handle it? No. In fact, um, 12 years and counting, I've never I've never had a sick chicken. Like we've never lost a chicken wow. to any kind of sickness. Um, I don't get them vaccinated. I don't use medicated feed. I just go super heavy on boosting their immune systems. One of the, I guess, strange things I started doing was in my chick brooder, like, you know, my plastic toad or whatever, I actually built a nice wooden one, but in my chick brooder, I stopped using shavings or anything and I use clumps of grass and dirt. Um, And I think that brings in some of the things from outside. It starts to work the chick's immune system, get it going. Um, cause you don't want them in a completely sterile environment. You know, it's like the boy in the plastic bubble. So yeah, I, I introduce them to things outside very early on. If you see baby chicks with a mother hen, you know, if she hatches them in the coop, she's got them out in the yard, scratching through the dirt and looking for bugs at like two days old. So I think that really helps with their immune systems. Plus I use the brewer's yeast and garlic and probiotics and I give them oregano and all kinds of fresh herbs. And I mean, knock on wood, we've, we've never had a sick chicken, That's which great is crazy but yeah (laughs) very very thankful for that i mean what a statement to prove doing things natural the right way keeping it simple that's all Mm -hmm. it takes and i tell you i never thought about in a brooder introducing some soil and some grass and that reminds me you know a lot of times when you were raising your baby chicks in a brooder even though i i know you love letting the broody hen uh do the job and that doesn't always work with your schedule uh you would bring them outside a lot in a cage and you would say set how it important. on the grass set yeah. it on the grass same let them concept, yeah exactly so that's a great point yeah same and concept I, yeah. the nice thing about the grass and dirt like i use rubber shelf liner because you don't want it to slip on the plastic but the nice thing about that is you just bring the whole thing outside dump it out hose off the tote and the shelf liner and throw in more dirt and grass and you're done. I mean, it just, yeah. once I stumbled across that and, and it's cute too, cause they're like in a little terrarium, you know, <laughs> I give them little sticks and branches and um, I mean, they love it. They nibble on the grass. Sometimes there's a bug in there. I, I don't know. They just like it better than shaving. Yeah. I oh, just, I have the, I, like I have that a too. broody that just, I gave two chicks to, well, I gave three, but one anyway. So she has her, she's raising two and it, it was amazing. I have a separate section from my, my American coop. And it was amazing. I kept her in there away from the rest of the flock so the, the babies would be safe. But it was amazing to see that like this chick that was maybe five days old was catching flies, going to catch bugs. Yeah. And, and how quickly they start scratching. It's like an, an instinct. Mm-hmm. And when you put them out in the environment, you see how how early, they, how young they are to do that. It's not just picking up from their mama. They just, they just have an instinct to do they that. Do it. Right. Yeah. They'll do it with, I mean, I have some really cute uh, photos and videos of chicks out with a mother hen and she's dust bathing and they're standing around just kind of like watching and pretty mm-hmm. soon they get the hang of it and they start doing it. But yeah, if you put a, like a tub of dirt in your brooder, a little, you know, container, 
baby chicks will start dust bathing with no mom around. It's just in their DNA. And, you know, it keeps them busy. It's really good for them. They love it. Plus, they that's the grit they need. So if you give them the clumps mm-hmm. of dirt and grass, you don't need to buy, like, the chick grit, which, right. like, who wants to spend money on stuff you don't need to? Tiny rocks. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. So, and, and, <laughs> Tiny and rocks, yeah. Well, I, I know there's a lot more questions. I definitely mm-hmm. want to get to them. But mm-hmm. one of the ones we get asked a lot that's um, – gets into a great detail and I notice it is in the chicken keeping hacks is the actual dust bathing. I noticed you have a section in there. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about your recipe, if you will, for dust bathing? Yeah, dirt. Um, <laughs> I've gone like the whole spectrum and I've gone from like using DE in the dust bath um, to, you know, dirt, putting herbs in there. I, uh, I did plant an herb garden for the chickens right next to the coop because they like herbs so much and they pretty much destroyed it. So now it's just basically a raised bed of dirt. <laughs> so that's what they dust bathe in. Um, in the winter, I do use the wood ash from our wood stove, which I like because in the run, I have like a little area ringed off with stones and I put the wood ash in there. It gives them something to do in the winter. You know, they really like it. It's something to do with our ash. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't really go crazy about like just dirt is fine. You know, if you do free range your chickens, you know that you can make the most elaborate yeah. dust bath. Yeah. And next thing you know, they're like in the middle of your yard creating <laughs> craters wherever they want. So yeah. 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 I don't I do like having the herbs there though, because there it still is a little bit of lavender. Um, there's some rosemary, some sage that keeps coming back year after year. So as they're dust bathing, they kind of are rubbing against the fresh herbs, which I think is nice because they get those oils and stuff. That's great. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I tell people to see where they dust bathe and then go and follow them. Put your stuff in there if you want to add anything to <laughs> just, it. But yeah, let, let them put it in there. Then they're like, no, we're not using that spot oh. anymore. We're going to move. <laughs> <laughs> they're always smarter than us somehow. We have a question. Yeah, yeah that's one of those overthinking things. Like, yeah, don't even yeah. worry about it. Just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have a question from Patty S. who says she has a barred rock that's developed a taste for fresh eggs. I've even caught her running down the ladder with an egg clenched in her beak like a kid at Christmas. Ooh. How do I stop this behavior? Ooh. Yeah, that's really bad. It um, is very bad. Uh, I mean, fortunate. So I, that's, this is another polarizing topic where I have fed my chickens eggshells, crushed eggshells, you know, eggs, if I break an egg as I'm, cause I collect the eggs and I put them in my pockets usually. And then, you know, if it breaks, I'll just throw it into the run. Mm-hmm. And fortunately I've never had anybody just start eating the eggs out of the, the nesting boxes. Um, and the eggs are great for them. The eggshells are great for them. So I'm not going to stop doing it. But if you get one that develops that bad habit, um, either those roll away nesting boxes, you know, so the eggs roll away as soon as they lay them, put curtains on your boxes. So, you know, she's not walking by and seeing an egg collect as soon as you can. And then I would put like fake eggs, golf balls, rocks, something in there. So hopefully if she goes in to start eating more, you know, she'll peck at it and be like, Oh, maybe I was mistaken. I guess they don't taste good. Right. And it's funny because I, someone had asked about the, the cooking the eggs and feeding them back to the chickens, which I had, had gotten, the recipe from you. I learned that from you. Mm-hmm. And what, just to tell people quickly what, what you and I both do is you wash the eggs as you get them because you don't want to store eggshells that haven't been washed. Believe me, right. you don't. So you wash the eggs, I keep them, and then um, I put them on a, a cookie sheet, bake them for about 15 minutes at 350. You know, they'll completely dry out and then we crush them, crush them and, and I feed them back to the chickens. And I know people will always say, oh, you're going to get egg eaters then. But they're not recognizing that eggshell as the thing that they just laid. People are making I mean, I, I don't bake mine. I like I air dry if I have extra. But but honestly, I mean, if I am cracking eggs and making scrambled eggs, I'll just take those halves and go right out there and give them to them. Cause I've gotten lazy. Like, you know, I used to peel out the membrane and, you know, dry the whole, whatever. The ducks love eggshells. They eat them like potato chips. And mm-hmm. I've even thrown the halves to them and they've never put together, you know, that those are like what's in the nest. Right. Um, but if you want to err on the side of caution, yes, using, you know, the, the crushing them and up and everything. But I, I don't believe that it leads to egg eating because you're either. providing them the calcium that they need. I think that, it's you're more apt to have them try to eat the eggs if you're not giving them the eggshells and the egg because they're not getting what they need so they're going to go looking for it 
That's, that, that's, that's a, such a great point. I never ever thought of that, but that just makes such good sense. I just want to remind everyone because our audience has jumped. Uh, I appreciate that. If you are just joining us, we are live. It is July 8th, 2022. We have the, you know, does, does, do you have a title that people call you like chicken queen or, you know? Uh, the, yeah. Queen of the coop. Actually, I have oh, been dubbed queen of the coop by the media. So I I'm going it. with that. We have Lisa Steele. We have Lisa Steele from Fresh Eggs Daily. <laughs> queen of the coop. I love that. Uh, who has generously join us um, to be part of this community video chicken live where she is answering your questions that you have. And also I just want to remind people she is going to give a winner, a free book, a signed autograph. I'm not, huh? Who let this oh, beast in? Who let Gus in? Here we go. Must be one <laughs> o'clock. Um, in order to win that free book, you must be able to guess exact. Well, whoever can get closest, but let's just say you got to guess how many nipples are in this vase. This is an honor that we finally, Got them back in stock. We got a lot of them in stock. We've been selling a lot of them, but they've been going out the door like crazy. Uh, but guess how many are in here, and you will win that autographed copy from Lisa Steele, Fresh Eggs Daily Queen of the Coop. I love that. Um, so it is 1250. <laughs> Yep. And how many, do we have any more questions you want to get to? Um, I'm just looking to see. Actually, Lisa and I, I have like one degree of separation from Lisa because Lisa had a roommate in New York named Jill, um, who I went to high yeah. school with. So Jill and I, I grew up with Jill. So that was just a little. That's funny. I love Jill. Yeah. <laughs> little, little fun fact. Um, fun so, fact. Yeah. <laughs> so Lisa and Very I. Very small world. Yes. Yes. So I just thought that was funny. Um, what are your other books? Oh, yeah, we have here. We have the... two of your books here, but just uh, like, what are your other So books? I have Fresh Eggs Daily, which is a great beginner guide to do all the natural things and get started. Duck Eggs Daily is the same for ducks. Um, Let's Hatch Chicks is my kid's book, which is a super cute, um, if you're, especially if you're hatching chicks, you know, when you want the kids to have like a book to read along with what's happening. It's a story about Violet who wants to be a mom. Um, gardening with chickens. If you're big into gardening and you want to learn more about like using the chicken manure and planting things for your chickens and all that, how to get them helping in the garden. Um, then the hacks book, DIY chicken keeping, which is more um, like projects, not heavy duty building, but you know, like kind of some building projects, roosts, nesting boxes, um, you know, things, swings, things like that. Uh, and then my cookbook. I think well, that was seven. all sound wonderful. <laughs> yes, I so badly want to write a book. We're going to have to ask Lisa what's the secret. Um, so before I forget, I want to share one of my favorite hacks. I just got to ask where it came from. And I bet you no one would ever guess this would be my favorite hack. And it has actually nothing to do with um, – the chickens or the chicken coop. This is something for the inside. And we got to do this. I, I don't know why. I love this. The beeswax candle um, inside <laughs> the eggshell. Where did this idea come from? Oh, um, I'm sure I saw it somewhere. Um, I don't even remember. That is a good <laughs> no, idea. I honestly, hey, because we all have yeah. we all have extra eggshells. Yes. I mean, I just I just no, want to yeah. I just want to share like that, that one. With, but the Oh, sorry, the one ahead. I like better is the fire starter with the, um, like in the egg carton, you put the beeswax and the shavings and the little mm. wick or whatever. And they're really cute to give us like holiday gifts, the little fire starter things. Um, so I just absolutely love this. And I just wanted to show it as another example that the one, the 101 chicken keeping hacks isn't just um, for the chickens and the coop. There's even some fun, great projects in there that I think is just awesome. You've covered so many great things, um, even down to the cleaning products you talked about that you didn't want the chemicals, down to the electrolytes. She talks about all that in there. So if you don't already own this book, I, I this and is my personal books. favorite. The other books sound good. I know, I know. Yeah, that, that, I think that's my favorite too. The The hacks? Mm -hmm. Very nice. It was fun to write. It was fun to come up with them. And I mean, it is jam packed with with all kinds of information. Yeah. And now we will have these books available on our website, right? Yeah. I'll put As links. A fulfillment. Yep. Yeah, I'll put links um, to all of Lisa's wonderful books on our website under the products we love so people can get them from there and they'll be all in one place. Right. And again, guys, I want to be clear. I know our super fans know this. If you're a new fan or you're getting to know me. We're not paying Lisa to say what she's saying. Uh, we did not pay her You're to come not. on. No, uh, I don't think so. Was, did I the not check know? did not um, clear, Lisa. Here. The check I, did not clear. <laughs> I want people to realize we are just 
good old fashioned chicken people that love what we do. And we want to share this mm-hmm. passion with people. If you're on the fence thinking about getting chickens, there's going to be a lot of good information out there. There's gonna be a lot of bad information and we live it there's every single day. So much bad information out there. And that, I mean, all I can do, cause at first it used to make me crazy, but all I can do is put my message out there, talk about what I'm going to talk about and hope people stumble across me or someone else who like you, who's, you know, kind of like-minded, but yeah, there's tons of bad information out there, you know, beware of groups and forums and, and all that. Like when I, when I started researching stuff, I made sure I was using scientific sites or educational sites or university, university of Maine has a wonderful poultry science department with tons of great information. So just beware where your information is coming from. Yes. And I tell people all the time, you know, you're, when you get the bad information, just think about what the chickens do before coops were invented. Mm-hmm. Don't overcomplicate it. Keep it simple. And again, those are the things that I love about over the years following Lisa, especially when she's on Facebook and I see the haters. I'm like, oh my gosh, how? because I know what I go through. I mean, it gets to you, but then eventually you do become numb and you just let it roll off. But it is crazy. There are some people out there. I'm like, these people just have no idea. And it worries me because I don't want people to be distracted from this great hobby. I want people to get into chickens or whatever it is, whether it's just the recipes, enjoy what chickens bring to us. It's so important. And we want to promote these books because we do truly believe in them. And the chicken community. It should be fun. Yeah, Yeah. it shouldn't be like a huge argument. I mean, people can disagree with me. That's not a problem. I love conversations or if someone asks why or or I, you know, I don't agree with this or don't agree with that. But yeah, some people are there just to cause problems. And it it kind of is discouraging because, yeah, that's not I mean, it makes me not want to go there, you know, when when you know there's going to be people just coming at you for you know, I mean, there's a whole hate group, Rotten Eggs Daily, that (laughs) has been targeting me for years. Oh, my God. I mean, it just gets to the point where I just pity people. Like, if that's the best thing you have to do is, like, comment on, on like, what I'm saying and doing and wearing and whatever, I, I pity you because you really need chickens and you just need to, you know, have some fun <laughs> in life. Cl- yeah, these are clearly not chicken people. Yeah, th- and that's a great point. So I just get, I love to go on record and share, you know, we have blood, sweat, and tears. God, we have learned so much about our uh, journey in backyard chicken keeping and why I love building things for animals and I want to make it so there's just that best marriage between human and chickens in this case when it comes to the chicken coops we design. But yet we're going to keep it simple and we're going to share with you what we truly believe. And Mm -hmm. this is just another great example to have Lisa on talking about the deep litter, talking about you don't have to heat your hen house in the winter. We're not just saying this. This is the real deal, and we want to be able to use this as information for your research. Also, I just want to remind people, there are some people asking, what's all the numbers for? Lisa is going to give a book, an autographed copy of one of her books to the winner, whoever can guess how many nipples are inside this vase. And I see we got a lot of guesses coming in. Mm-hmm. I didn't see anyone get it yet. Um, you have it. Well, you have probably have you seen them all. Do you know what it is, Ingrid? I do not. No one knows. Oh, no, one it's knows. in your head. It's in math. Right? I know. So, Lisa, I have a question. What is probably the one of the most common but worst pieces of advice people give with backyard chickens? Besides heating the coop, we all know that one. But what what would you think would be one of the, the things that you see over and over again that's probably not beneficial and one of the bad pieces? I would of say n- not giving chickens treats. Like chickens should only eat chicken feed because even the chicken feed companies who obviously would be the ones to say only chicken feed all the time, you know, they even admit that up to 10% of treats are fine. And I probably overdo that on occasion. My chickens get treats almost every day, but it's mostly, you know, it's, it's, it's healthy stuff. Like I'll have people email me and say, you know, I have some stale Oreos. Can I give them to the chickens? And I'm like, well, you could, but why would you? You know, like when I'm cooking, I, I keep a bowl and I give, you know, all the ends and scraps and, you know, meat scraps and fish skins and ends of vegetables and leftovers and that. But, you know, we eat fairly healthy. So the healthier you eat, the healthier your chickens are going to eat. But I think not giving your chickens any kind of treats is wrong. They they enjoy them. We enjoy them. It's a way not to have food waste. Um, and even if treats are dandelion greens or, you know, something out of the garden or or whatever, mine get something every day. And I know they look forward to that. Yeah. And it also helps build the relationship. I know that if I need to mm-hmm. call my chickens, all I have to do is open the galvanized can and they right. know that's where the and meal worms are and they come running. And if I if I need to get them or I need to get them away from something, then that's that actually is helpful. And I think it cuts down on 
you know, bullying and aggression. And, and it just, I mean, it, it's, it's just a big part. I mean, everyone's grandparents who raised chickens, those chickens were eating all the scraps. It's like having pigs, you know, they, that's one of the reasons for have chickens is to eat your food scraps. Nothing really goes in the compost, you know, because the chickens eat almost everything. So I'd, right. I'd say that's probably really bad advice. Um, and I mean, they're not going to live forever. You know, some of my chickens are eight and nine years old. Ch clearly treats don't kill them. You know, they, they live long, happy lives. They lay us delicious eggs and they eat a lot of treats. Just, you know, not cookies. And, you know, on occasion, though, I have to say, you know, they, they've eaten pretty much everything on occasion. <laughs> I'll never forget one time I was on video and people, one person lit me up for offering the crust from the pizza. Like, oh, that's going to increase their <laughs> cholesterol and make them fat. I'm like, oh, my gosh. This is... Yeah, you can make... yeah, I, do I don't even think that's true for with... humans. <laughs> I, I don't know. All right, well, well it right? is. I mean, if all your chickens are eating is pizza crust, yes, they're not going to be very healthy. But when you throw down the leftovers and, yeah, there's, you know, a hot dog bun or there's this or there's that. I've got 18 chickens and 10 ducks. Like, how much is anyone getting of any one thing? You know, it's. I don't worry. They're not going to live forever regardless. Right. So, Well, Lisa, thank you so much. It is top of the hour. I, I know this was uh, a lot of your time. Thank you so much. We yes, are huge fans you. of yours. Keep up the good work. And hopefully we can do some more stuff in the future. If there's anything mm -hmm. you need from us, Absolutely. please let yeah, us know. Yeah, I would love to. Thank you. This has been fun. Thank you. You're yes, welcome. Thank, thank you, you, Lisa. <laughs> and enjoy your whiskey sours. Oh my god! god. I, so I think good. I'm getting drunk already. I had so, like two sips, and, and that's like too that much for have, me. <laughs> that did have an egg white in it. Nice. Yes, it did. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's that's a good drink. I gotta say, it's if you like mm -hmm. whiskey, you definitely need my cookbook and make yourself a maple whiskey sour. Yeah. So I guess that's a nice little shot of protein there with your drink. Huh? It's really healthy. No, I, I yeah, absolutely. I had no idea. Healthy. It was good. You know how I am about my drinks. I know. It you was really like good, two. which is why I have to not keep drinking it because I will not be able to drive home. Thank you, Lisa. You have Thank a wonderful you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Wow. That was so fun. So you like the raw egg, egg white in there. You know, so here's the problem. My mother has... Maybe my All right, the show ain't long enough for that. Maybe, so <laughs> maybe my sister's right. My, my sister's like, your our mother messed you up. I'm okay, like, well, she used to tell me, don't ever eat anything raw with an egg because of well, the salmonella it, it bacteria. Said in the book and now I'm kind of freaking out. But that, that was if so you good. Mix it well enough with the acid from the lemon juice, it fixes anything bad. So well, scary good. It's good enough for Rocky. It's good enough for us. Right. Yo, Rocky. That's right. That's right. And <laughs> I made sure to get an egg that was just laid today, so it's. Completely fresh. fresh. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was Lisa Steele from I Fresh did. Eggs Daily, Queen of the Coop. I think Such you, I a think he, I think you need to uh, order the rest of her books for the work library. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, she just is such. She has such good information. She has been there from the beginning. It seems she is the consummate chicken. Backyard chicken keeper, yeah. I feel. Yes. And there, there, uh, you know, I, I didn't want, I was going to get into it and I didn't want to. I'm so sick of negativity. I need to get rid of the negativity. And we did touch on a little bit of the negativity where there's the, there's the haters out there. But again, I can't say I it enough. I don't see what you could hate. No, no, no. Well, I love what Lisa stands for because we get contacted all the time about chicken influencers, influencers, give us free coop, this and that. Um, and I'm always on guard, especially Ingrid. Oh, boy. She's, she's on guard. Making sure, um, we are very particular and careful about who we associate ourselves with, which we should. And again, this show is all about education, sharing good information, and why. You know, uh, we don't have a sponsor. Carolina Coops, well, I guess Carolina Coops is our sponsor. <laughs> but I want people to be able to have uh, a source that they can go to and see the real deal. And it's not always just us. And that's what I love about Lisa. She, uh, she is just such a nice lady. And we've talked to some of the other ones that compete with her, if you will. Mm -hmm. And again, I was just proven. I was like, this is why I won't, I don't even want to talk to this person again or whomever. Um, but uh, she, I love what she's doing and she's standing her ground and I'm proud of her for that and love these books. All right. Yeah. Um, so it is 103. We definitely are going to have to have a hard stop at 130, but I did notice the show yeah. built up. I thank you guys very much. Um, please, if you haven't already shared the show, share the show. Two o'clock today is a big, big deal. Uh, we have our final inspection, so I can tell you today is probably the biggest day in Carolina Coops history. Did you realize that? I'm glad I'm here. Yes, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you got me drinking already. Oh, which, oh my God. Uh, Do you want to finish mine? I'm so afraid to drink it because it tastes so good. I don't know. 
No, drink it. Do, I, do you I, guys I, think Ingrid should finish her drink? No. Let us I know really out there. I really was really, really surprised how good that drink was. That was so good. It really is good. Did you make one for Nan? No. No, not no, 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 no she hard, was... no hard liquor. For, no, no dark liquor for Nan. Oh, okay. That I keep forgetting that she only drinks the clear liquor. Uh, if you guys think that Ingrid should finish her drink, please let us know in <laughs> no. the comments. Also, Ingrid's small and has a very low tolerance. If we, you want rate. to win a book, a signed autograph from Lisa Steele, Fresh Eggs Daily, you got to guess how many nipples are inside this beautiful vase. And one guess only, people. And one guess only, and it's the first person that gets it right, or by the end of the show, who gets closest. Um, and I still, I've been scanning the answers, and mm -hmm. I haven't seen the right answer answer yet do you want to answer some questions i would here? love to answer some questions let's, so, let's change up the background we need to change up oh, the background sorry, let's yeah. mix it up here we got uh i'm not paying attention i know there we go ah there we go there we go what, what a great chicken talk oh, about talk about on, the haters hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh, i know i want to i want i do that want to the most hated coop it's the most commented the negative most it's yeah, not the most the, hated it's well, got no, the most no. backlash i mean it is the most i mean i get it's orders. probably the most loved coupe, but it's yes. such a popular coupe that you're going to buy the, the chance you're going to have the most people the negatively police, count yeah. all the chicken police. Oh, speaking of chicken police, it was so funny what you sent me. Did you send that to Ingrid so we can show that, that someone was on the no, news? No, I didn't. Saying the chicken police it, came it out viral here. It viral this week, though. So <laughs> I, I saw it on a different couple, couple different places. I think it was in, uh, oh, Jacksonville, Florida. Some guy got attacked by his neighbor's rooster and he... He killed it, and uh, they the, in, the news interviewed him, and he said, well, what am I supposed to do, call the chicken police? <laughs> that's so funny. We might need to trademark chicken police, Ingrid. Okay. Uh, real quick, also, uh, 10 <laughs> Was I supposed to give it CPR? Ten Was it 10 years ago or 12 years ago today? I'm trying to remember what year. I think it was 12 years ago. I want to share one of my oh. favorite photos, mm -hmm. and a coupe I have actually been thinking about bringing back. Look at this beauty. I remember this day like yesterday, and uh, this was 12 years ago today, and that was our old townhouse coupe. And you can tell how old it is because it does not even have the deep litter system in it. But what I loved about this is we had to design a coupe that could fit in these tight areas but still not sacrifice the health and safety of the chickens. Well, don't we have the California coupe for that? But you have the California, but it's four foot by nine foot. This one's three foot. Oh. by uh, 12, well, in the picture's 12 foot, but the yeah. point is by turning the hen house, it does change a lot of things. And I thought about bringing it back because there might be people out there like, oh my gosh, Matt, that's what I need. We need to turn the hen house. We need to do this. We need to do that. Um, and mm, possibly bring that back. Also, I don't think so. Because I love when we argue. <laughs> because also we have drops that I have hung on to all these years and said we will use it up. And that might be one of the ways we can use it up. Also... Mm hmm. TikTok. If you are not following Carolina Coops on TikTok, please go do so. I did a little TikTok the other day. I saw it. And I, we did a little vote. We did a little vote. Hold on. Sorry. I was shocked. Oh, the, le the ramp or the ladder. The ramp, the ramp or the ladder. I know. Okay. And I just thought, why not? And there's a great, uh, hopefully we're going to have a video soon of the six by eight penthouse American style where there is no run. God, I'm sweating bullets in that video. A lot of people love the ramp. Mm -hmm. And there are some great. Wait, is that what you have pictured though? I have both. Oh, you have both. Yeah, but see, there. no, the problem. Okay, I, I have to object, and the reason why is because in that video, I'm shaking like crazy. No, no, you have the ramp on a penthouse. Monday, sir. Monday, boy. Oof. What? Monday hemp will be in stock. Wow. You interrupted. Sorry. Yeah. Typical. Um, in that in that video, you have the ramp in the penthouse, on the penthouse coop. So you're not seeing how long that ramp is in relationship to uh. the run and how you would trip over. Because for the penthouse, yeah, that's great because it's just going out. It's just going out into the wild. I mean, But it's see, fine. I would disagree because now look at all the water you're going to trap on a solid surface, which you won't on a ladder. Uh. Monday, hemp will be back in stock if right. people are wondering so we have some questions and i just want to i see scottish wild man i had sent you an email to just get um a little bit of clarification on your shirt size because you you he was owed a shirt and then he said uh uk large and i'm like all right is that not the same as a u.s large so mm. answer my email yeah, scottish wild yeah man, please so do can, that so yeah I, our I did, shirt to you i didn't mention it the golden bell is here he was the last winner of the golden bell we haven't had a golden bell in a while up until that comment and 
I did. I do want it to be the comments that offer like a great suggestion, great uh, contra- contribution. Right. But it seems like it's the ones that just make me laugh. <laughs> so we have um, a question. Dwan Bennett says, I'm moving my chickens to a new coop and I want to move my turkeys into the old chicken coop. Is there anything I have to do to the old coop to set it up for turkeys? It depends on the coop. Well, what, are, what do turkeys require in a coop? They're very similar to chickens. Okay. Okay. Uh, at least my turkeys are. And my turkeys and chickens live together. Uh, the turkeys usually won over the table scraps, that's for sure, because they're bigger, they're meaner. They have longer necks. Longer necks. <laughs> um, when we've done turkey coops, we've just beefed up the roost bars, which makes sense because they're much heavier, especially if you they become full grown and keep on growing. Uh, so you want to make sure that you beef up the roost bars if, if need be. People freak out about the size of the opening. My turkeys had no problem. Fitting through the automatic door, fitting through the chicken door, which was eight and a half by 12. You know, it doesn't. And you just happen to remember that. Well, yeah, it was our standard size. Oh, okay. And so I I don't know. And you just got to make sure. I mean, they're going to crap a lot more. If you got the deep litter system, think about that. You got to make sure your diaper is going to be able to withstand the amount of additional droppings turkeys may bring because that's a lot more nitrogen so i would guess less per hen house just because of their sheer size i would say so and also make sure there's tons of headrooms they are taller they are bigger um but other than that i mean yeah they're pretty similar especially the heritage breeds i I don't know how a meat turkey would i don't know if meat turkeys are like meat chickens where they have probably no mine were all similar yeah so i've only had heritage breeds or whatever and i think you did too so well, I, yeah, I had the brown ones and the white ones, the Heritage and the Royal Palms. Were yeah, the... I had Royal Palm, too. Lisa Haymaker says egg white in the frozen margaritas I make makes the froth. Ooh. Mm. And Misty's telling me to drink it. Yeah, drink <laughs> it, drink it, drink I, it. I didn't fall to peer pressure in college. I'm not going to fall to peer mm, pressure here. I don't know. Um, oh, any chicken police? Ingrid's mad at me. She still got the crinkled up paper on her desk the last time. There was a there was a comment that Th- was. Then let's do it. Let's. No, do I'm it. not. I'll, 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 I want to just. It's get right the there. Comment. It's right there. Okay, fine, fine. Yes, this show is for them. Hang on. Oh wait, I, what are we doing? I got a, I, the comment on the chicken police. Oh, that is there a I new one? Yes, and I did not like it. I think I'm gonna guess seventy six. Oh, you're making a guess. Are you sitting here counting? So somebody said on the um, Virginia Duck Coop, the craftsman, mm-hmm. Coop is set way too low. Shame. Mm. Shame, watch, shame, w- shame. Watch the video. I know, right? And then somebody said on an American Coop, beautiful birdhouse. But I guess a birdhouse is a chicken coop, so that's fine. Um, fantastic job, but really expensive. Uh, you should have fastened the steel through the top of the rib. I don't know. Uh, buzzer. Uh, negative. Ghost Rider. God, speaking of that, I asked someone in our <laughs> shop the other day, you know, did you go see the Top Gun Maverick movie? He's like, yeah, it was awesome. I said, well, did you like it as much as the original Top Gun? He goes, I never watched the original Top Gun. They're too young. Oh, yeah. way too young. Okay, no, you do not put the screw through the rib. That is old school. Times have changed. Um, that is an old school technique and i understand it and actually when they first came out with roofing truth be told they would actually hammer and not screw the roof on with the rubber gasket and i know this because i've removed a lot of metal off old barns that were about that time period and the, the the thought is when you put a screw through the top of the rib you have the least amount of chances of water getting in because it's up on top of the hill if you will or on top of the peak or on oh, top of the rib then down in the valley Okay, but with today's technology, no, you go down in the valley. Those neoprene washers on those screws are phenomenal. You do not go through the rib. And the other reason why I don't like going through the rib, and we have to be careful of this when we do go through the rib with the ridge cap, which is for a different reason. You got to make sure you don't crush that rib, and that's easy to do. And I don't want right. people to do that. It is ex- a, a what's called an exposed fastener system. You put the screw through the valley. Thank you very much. Moving on. Okay, I want to forget chicken police for now. John Canfield has a comment, and John, he says, "Hi from the Texas Hill Country. We've just we have twenty two chickens in our newly completed six by thirty American coop. Who, if people belong to the Carolina Coops Owners Forum, have seen his coop. And Matt was just talking about him this morning. What did you say, Matt? Spot on, perfect. Spot 
on perfect. I've been, uh, so John, thank you so much for your business. Thank you so much for taking the time to get outstanding pictures and yeah. sharing them to that Carolina Coops owner forum. If you're not there, uh, check it out. If you're thinking about getting a, a Carolina Coop, you can definitely try to join. We have nothing to do with it, but I, last week's show, if you didn't watch last week's show, you'll see the people that came up with the idea and police it. Um, I love what these people are doing, especially John an yeah, amazing job. I've been following that as well. Amazing They're, job. And that's a huge coop. It's yeah. a huge coop and just goes to prove to me again, good builders crush it. They just understand it. And there have been times I get the people that are the engineers that know everything. They they just they just don't get it. And I can tell by watching um, him put his coop together, spot on perfect. Love everything they've done. Yeah. It's and it's just it's just amazing. It looks so good, and I love that people are sharing what they're doing in the um how like how they're doing so their coops and things. BJ Feast. All right. So if you put the metal roof on and you did go through the top of the rib, it's not the end of the world. There's nothing. It's not that it's wrong. It's just it's easier now to screw down to the valley because you don't have to worry about crushing that rib. But as long as you got the new screws with the neoprene washers, and actually what happens is when you put that screw in, it does create a little bit of friction where it creates an adhesion between that neoprene washer and the metal, and it seals it. Uh, so don't let that uh, – don't lose sleep over it. I just want to make it clear you don't have to do it like they did back in the old days. I like Ben's comment. OG Top Gun is better. Fight me. <laughs> I need to get out and see this. Um, yeah, you, so ben. egg white and Tito's for non. <laughs> egg white and Tito's. Have some protein in your vodka. And I do like that you guys are putting question in front of it. I definitely appreciate that. Yes, thank you. That was um, Jeff from. How Rick. big should a chicken run be? Is there chicken math to determine the size of run should be, or minimum size based on fifteen chickens? Thank you for your time. There is. A number. You Generally to... speaking, it's 10 square feet. Industry standard. Yeah. and it's... Who's this industry? There, I don't think it's enough. It's not. It's yeah. not at all. I mean, that's... So the, the more space, the better. More course. space, the better. When it comes to the run, do not go any smaller than 10 square feet per hand. But I'm telling you, that's still small. My minimum is 20. It's just like the roost bars. People yeah. will tell you, oh, eight inches per hand on the roost bar. Or if, F you, if you go... A little smaller, you're going to have to free range. I mean, I, you're not going to have to, but it would be nice. To, well, yes. If you are going to be able to, to free range, the bit. run size is not nearly as critical. It's still nice to have a solid roofed run. But if you're not going to free range, go as big as possible. Have your boredom busters. Make sure you're going out there with treats. Make sure the chickens have everything because that's it. That's all they have for their outside world. Yeah. You know, people. Oh, no, I was going to say, even though you do free range or give give them more space like I do, I guess technically I don't free range, but I give them a lot more space. Um, when it's pouring, they're under the run. So mm -hmm. if you have a day that's just yeah. raining all day and you have like 25 chickens in a 72 square foot run, which is the American Coop 6 by 12, then that's a lot of chickens to be in a really small space. So you have to think about that as well even though you are letting them out mm -hmm. um there are times when they're going to be in there yeah. or want to be in there for the shade or i get out of the weather so hey let, let's see who won well are we any more close yeah let's keep answering any more questions i we definitely have to have a hard stop at 1 30 if you haven't already made a guess please guess if you want a chance at winning a free signed autograph book from lisa Steele, fresh eggs daily queen of the coop um how many nipples do we have in this vase and also this is because we got the world's best nipples in stock we got a lot of them don't be fooled by the chinese knockoffs these are from denmark the, the danes these are the danes these are the best <laughs> because it's the best plastic down to the stainless steel the little rubber o-ring and my favorite is the spring if you look at the Chinese knockoffs, it, it, there's a lot more resistance on there, and you don't need that much resistance. So just the best. We got them in stock. They've been going out the door like crazy. I appreciate everyone's business. And if you are thinking about building your own water bar or need nipples, whatever, we got them in stock. Just go to carolinacoops.com. So Melinda T. asks, um, can a person buy a penthouse and then with extra matching roofing panels to make their own run? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, one of those just went out. Yeah, we just did that for Misty. Misty, yeah. Misty, who I believe is watching. Her coupe went out, and she we added an additional 16 panels. 
uh, which I love what she's doing. Get out there and 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 add on to it. Put your own twist on it. Uh, she ordered hundred foot of half inch hardware cloth, the roofing, uh, the screws. She's probably gonna call back. Oh, oh my gosh, Matt, you're right. I should have just bought the whole. <laughs> darn that's thing. what I'm thinking. It's like not as sometimes e- it's like you're gonna have to do the trusses. And- oh, there's a <laughs> lot more work to it than people think. You know. Yeah. 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 Yes, I love selling our coops and the runs, this and that, but I will give people what they want. Uh, but trust us when we say this, and we hear this at least once or twice every day. People going, "Oh my gosh, do I wish I would have just bought the whole coop from you?" Yep. Um, question: We are considering raising meat chickens along with the chickens for eggs. Is there anything special we would need, or anything special for the coop that would be required? Can we get that deal done, please? What, Mr. Mueller? Oh, yeah. Waiting patiently yeah. has one of the most amazing designed coops by the Evan Archer, the master of chicken coop design. And to that point, Ingrid, I don't know if I showed you this coop. Did you see it? Do you know what I'm talking about? I never know what you're talking about. We, we now, <laughs> at the North Carolina shop, if you wanted to come in and see a coop that has been drawn up just for you, Hopefully, after we pass today's inspection, we'll have our production coops out in the front yard. However, for our custom coops, like Mr. Mueller's, an amazing tea house chicken coop that we got to see in virtual reality. Oh. I was like, standing on the roof. Life size. It is incredible. Mr. Mueller, I saw your coop in, in, in virtual reality. and Oh, my gosh. We got to get this done. But anyways, to answer your question, um, raising meat chickens along with the chickens for eggs, is there anything special we would need? A lot more high-protein food. Can yeah. they even jump up on roost bars? No, no so they we, they're, they're just going to eat and sleep right there well, by the food on, dish. Hold on, hold on. Well, if they're the, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you were about to say it. I want to. I don't want to confuse. If they're people. the the standard meat chickens that only grow for you to slaughter them. It, it, so to answer your question, um, it's going to have a lot to do with which breed you choose because the meat birds now that are the most common grow so fast. Um, that they can, it is kind of sad when you think about this. All right. And I've seen it firsthand. They grow so fast that the feathers can't even keep up with the skin. Right. So they look like they, ugh, they look, ugh, it takes a little getting used to seeing them. Their legs are gigantic to be able to hold up all that meat, especially around the breast area. Um, th- you're going to need something completely different. They don't even get off the ground because they can't even jump at all, let alone get to a point where they can walk around. Uh, there's a whole debate whether or not that's right or wrong. That's another story. But there are certain breeds that are your multi-purpose, people call them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that dual purpose. Dual purpose. Yeah, dual and purpose. then there's, um, there, I think they're called Freedom Rangers, but uh, they're like meat birds that do do some. Freedom free range, Rangers. I've free heard ranging. a lot of good things about Freedom Rangers. Yeah, so so those are more meat birds, but they they do more. Huh, what's Chicken for, things. Are the nipple guesses price is right style? <laughs> which which means you can't go over. Hold it, on. Do right? people know? I did a video a long time ago. My dream since I was a kid was to have my own wood shop with a TV and be able to do woodworking and watch Price is Right at the same time. I love Price is Right. We need to do Sounds something. Sounds like you'd cut your finger off if you're watching TV while you do woodworking. We need to do something Price is Right style. I love Price is Right. <laughs> so, um. Uh, BJ, if he said he had built his own coop doing research by watching your video. So thanks for the info. You are welcome, sir. Um, Assuming, sir. I'm sorry. BJ fees. I shouldn't assume. Well, we need to we need to do this. I don't want to run out of time. One, we're not going to run out of time. Does anyone have the answer, Ingrid? I don't. She doesn't know. I don't know Only the answer. I know. And I, I'm scared to touch the mouse. If I touch All right, this go little. Go touch. Go touch. Okay. All right. So we're going to zip through. This is your last chance. If you have not already answered, put in a guess. How many nipples are in this vase? We got about seven minutes for the rest of the show. This is your chance to win a free autograph book from Lisa Steele, Fresh Eggs Daily. That was so much fun. Yeah, she is great. She is great. And I tell you, so thankful she came on. Mm -hmm. Um, All right, so we're going to go through. So let's do this. We're going to do this. We're going to go comments, and we're going to come over here just so everyone can see it. What? What? Am I doing something wrong? No, no, it's a good idea. Um. Why didn't I think of that? So, yeah, Lisa does need a Carolina Coop. She definitely, we're going to start with a Carolina Coop's mug. We got to get her a mug. Um, <laughs> that's funny you mentioned that. We'll talk about that later. All right, so we're going to go through here, see if anyone has the right answer or whoever's closest. Uh, so scroll in, scroll in, scroll in. Maybe there's something else you guys can talk about while I'm really trying to hyper-focus. Did you like the puffy eggs? 
They were a little overcooked. Yeah, I was going to say, shouldn't they be more runny? They were, but, but I, they for, were good. I, had to rant, I for, thought I turned off the oven. That's why I had to run uh, back. Okay. <laughs> they were incredible. But I, they were so good. The, and they, so you almost could pick them up and eat them like a cracker. Yes. <laughs> but they were good. Thank you for making that. Yeah, oh, especially at the last minute. Um, so good. I think that was a great touch, too. I think Lisa really appreciated oh, that. Oh, yeah. Um, I like, really want to. I wasn't expecting the drink either. <laughs> I didn't did, know. did you like the maple leaf in there? I had to pilfer that on my way to work. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I was very worried about the uh, drink because who knows with you guys. Um, oh, I have, and I have some stuff growing that I'm going to end up bringing in for him to uh -oh, try. Uh-oh, Nanner's in. What's going on? Something. Is the inspector here already? Do you want to try this? Because I can't drink it because no, I'll be drunk. You. Thank you. It's really good. Um, no, nothing. Everything's great. Perfect. Fair enough. Stop. So Stop. haven't gotten any. You're marking down something. I I am marking down. Ooh. People um, that are close. Yeah, yeah. But I can't again, if you've that. already answered, if you've already answered, uh, we have one person that is very very close so far. Oh, oh boy, and I don't want to help anybody else. I don't know if that was a clue. This is a lot of pressure. I'm starting to sweat. You know the AC's working really well now. If um, Ingrid's like, can I have a sweatshirt before the show? She's in here freezing. Yeah, it was um, I think we're going to have a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Let me just check. And I don't know if, if this person's maybe made multiple guesses. I am just. Yeah, please don't cheat. No cheating, guys. You guys, you know that. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to go up to it. Uh, I'm going to go up to it. And it is actually, like the price is right. You're the wheel that. You're um, like the little. Are you the um, mountain climber guy? <laughs> that's. What are you guys doing to me? That is my favorite one. I know. No, everyone is. loves Planko. No, like, I know you like that. I know you like that. You mentioned it I just, before. I don't know what it is. So, I mean, truth be told, <laughs> my parents sent me to a babysitter when I was a little kid. And I'm not, I don't even want to get into all that. However, every day was Price is Right. And it, boy, <laughs> I think it did some damage. Um, well, clearly those were your fondest memories. But. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So, we have a winner. <gasps> we exact. have a winner. No, it is not exact. No. Oh. But it is the closest. I'm going to say, because I'm not going through this again. Time is right, up. Pull it in. Oh, you guys ready for the winner? Do that anyhow, you? Wendy S at 133. Whoa. Ooh. The Wendy. answer is 134. Wait a second. What? You put that so with Alan, you put that one that one nipple that was on your desk. So it was 133 when you walked into the room because you added that one nipple when you walked in. So actually she oh, that's, psychically knew. <laughs> that is true. And then I said, no, I don't want an imposter. I don't want anyone arguing. So I had the one nipple that I always use as a fidget. <laughs> These do make good fidgets. If you need a fidget for your office desk, get a nipple. Um, wow. 134 is the official answer. 133 was the original. And Wendy asks, you are the closest. Congratulations. You won yourself an autographed copy. Uh, book. I don't know which one it is, but uh, she well, she pick. she gets to pick. And oh, Wendy S, that's please awesome. email Ingrid at CarolinaCoops dot com um, and tell me which Lisa Steele book you want, and give me your address, and I'll send that over to Lisa for you. That is awesome. All right, it is one twenty seven. We're coming to the end of the show. Okay. I hope you guys love today. What a great show. That oh. was awesome. Thank you for having yeah, me. Yes. yes. Um, all right. It is 30 minutes into game time. It okay. is 30 minutes until Big day. it's about to get real. Back to work. My life is about to get easier. Or Matt's going to be all emotional, I can tell. No, no, no. No, I'm hard as a rock. He's going to yeah. be no. like a puddle after the show. <laughs> no. All right, everybody. We pass our inspection. It is going to be I can't tell you the weight that's going to come off my shoulders. I didn't sleep a minute last night because oh. of this. I don't know how I even function. I don't know how I pulled it together. But anyways, yes. All right. All right. Um, we'll see you guys next Friday, hopefully, right. unless they shut us down. <laughs> I have no Love idea. Love your what we're chickens. And each other. Later.